CIA headquarters are located in Langley, Virginia, 15 miles outside Washington, D.C. 16,000 people work inside this fortress. The CIA is not required to reveal its budget, organization chart, key figures, number of employees and salaries, or even their names and job descriptions. Its overall budget is rumored to reach wild figures. We do know that the CIA staff has grown from 35 at the agency's inception to 100,000 at present. Its budget has jumped from several thousand dollars to $28 billion. The CIA is in charge of counter-espionage efforts outside the country, but is not allowed to operate on American soil, a domain still reserved to the FBI. Truman made the CIA directly responsible to the President of the United States. But the agency soon slipped out of his grasp, becoming the only service authorized to carry out special covered actions and subversive operations abroad. When the CIA was created, it was given a clear task, gathering, correlating, coordinating and analyzing intelligence and intervening only when diplomatic efforts failed and military action was not recommended. The CIA was a creation of the Cold War. It had one fun function and one function only. It was supposed to only have one. And that was to determine when, how and where the Soviet Union was going to attack the United States or if. That's all it was set up for. It was set up after Pearl Harbor, after the failure we were attacked, and our whole mission through the 50s and 60s, through the 70s and through the 80s, was to decide or to figure out what were the plans and intentions of the Politburo in Moscow. We also made a fundamental error in that we chose early on to focus our spies on what we call hard targets. And so all of our intelligence has been focused on the Soviet Union. CIA, the U.S. intelligence community as a whole, was spending somewhere between 55 and 60 percent of our resources on the Soviet Union. That was our job, was to check them in the Third World, wherever it was, in Angola, in the Horn of Africa, in the Congo, in uh, Afghanistan, uh, in Iran. Uh, this was a constant uh, uh, silent war, if you will, that went on for decades. That's the name of the game. I mean, our job was to find out what people were up to. And the best way to find that out is to penetrate some organization, put somebody in there or defect somebody. And that's what we, name of the game, that's what we did. We began our erroneous ways by importing as many Nazis as we could into the United States. In 1943, future CIA head Alan Dallas flew to Switzerland to open secret negotiations with several Nazi leaders. Contact had already been made with General Reinhard Galen, head of Hitler's Secret Service, Otto von Boschwing, Eichmann's right-hand man, and Klaus Barbie. All these war criminals would be employed by the CIA at the close of the war. As a renowned Wall Street lawyer, Alan Dell's biggest clients was the Standard Oil Group, one of only a handful of companies that kept on doing business with the Nazis during the war. And therefore, America literally infected itself with Nazis immediately after World War II, because that was the price it was willing to pay for their brains. That was the first mistake. The second mistake over time has been to believe that we could interfere in the affairs of others and literally topple governments by putting our money and our influence behind selected groups. In 1953, at the height of the Cold War, Alan Dallas is named Director of Central Intelligence. The number of special and secret operations grows steadily after Dallas takes over the CIA. If you go back to 1947 and take it all the way through uh, uh, Guatemala, uh, Hungary, uh, Berlin, uh, Vietnam, uh, Chile, uh, all the operations over the years, the same kind of behavior is repeated again and again and again. The CIA has mounted a number of covert operations. One of the reasons the CIA went into covert operations was because it was something no one else was doing, and so there was no bureaucratic competition over it. Uh, they also went into these operations because the presidents found that they could use this tool secretly without having to explain to the American people what they were doing. It's probably changed a fair amount over the years. If you were to go back to the uh, Eisenhower period or even the early Kennedy period, 
there really was much more discipline and much more secrecy. And this, of course, was these were the days when the CIA was really doing things like Iran, like uh, Guatemala, and so forth. You didn't actually hear much in this country about those operations in those days because people didn't talk about them. In May 1953, Allen Dallas draws up Operation Ajax, the first in a long string of coups organized entirely by the CIA. In Tehran, Iranian Prime Minister Mossadegh has decided to privatize the Anglo-Iranian oil company. British authorities launch an international embargo against Iran, plunging the country into chaos. But British and American oil companies deem the measure insufficient and flee Iran. They push the British Prime Minister to ask President Eisenhower to help them get rid of Mossadegh. Alan Dallas puts together an operation to oust Mossadegh and restore the young Shah to power. Shah Reza Pahlavi will rule the country until he in turn is outsted. 25 years later. It was not a big, super planned coup. It was a big, crazy thing that happened. But you know who was behind that? It was British Petroleum. British Petroleum, the Prime Minister of Britain, came to Eisenhower and said, there's a threat here of taking over the Iranian oil fields. We need it, just as you need Saudi Arabia. And so the Americans went along. Millen was prime minister at the time, and he brought a lot of pressure to bear on Eisenhower and Americans, Alan Dulles and so forth, to do something about the situation there. When the British approached uh, the Eisenhower administration, the argument that convinced Eisenhower to say yes was not that we'll give you some of the Iranian oil when it's over, it's that Mossadegh is losing power to the communists. And the Soviet Union is going to win Iran the way the communists won China. And you, President Eisenhower, don't want to be the president who has to answer the question, who lost Iran? There was a very formal procedure on the Mossadegh affair. This was a, an organized plan. Mossadegh is a bad leader. He's weak. The communists are strong. He's also irrational. Uh, the Shah's also weak. He's not going to do anything about it. We have to intervene to save the country from being taken over from the, by the Soviets. Just that blunt. Mossadegh was a communist, and I have no doubt he was. I thought it was a good idea. If uh, we had not got rid of Mossadegh, you might have had a very different kind of government. Socialist, communist, God knows what. We can't now let Iran fall, but at the same time, we're not going to fight a war like Korea in Iran. We're, we're not prepared to do that. So the cheap way to do it is covert operations. CIA will be more active. And so Alan Dulles became the director of CIA with the mandate to be active. And he said the inexpensive way to be a great power is to topple governments with the CIA. So this was a huge success. That's why they thought, well, Guatemala and other places uh, do it this way. You know, it's easier. And the question of whether it's moral or immoral. In June 1954, Guatemala's new president, Jacobo Arbenz Guzman, decides to give the country's poorest farmers a few acres of land held by the United Fruit Company, an American multinational. He also creates a tax on exports. Guatemala is the Caribbean's leading producer of bananas and tropical fruits, the country's unique resource. But virtually all the nation's lands, its entire economy, is in the hands of United Fruit. When Guatemala very reasonably wanted to tax uh, the bananas, uh, the United Fruit Company asked the U.S. government to go in and, and basically bankrupt Guatemala. They were very close to people in the White House and the Pentagon and all over the government. They had, they had an um, enormous influence over the U.S. government and they were able to uh, call f for the overthrow of our bends. They were uh, leaning leftward toward communism and that was something that we wanted to resist. There were two things involved, United Fruit and communism and Jacobo Arbenz came down on the wrong side of it. A full-scale coup is drawn up during the meeting between President Eisenhower, Alan Dallas, and Dallas brother, John Foster, head of the U.S. State Department. The Dallas brothers, who once ran Wall Street's leading law practice, now hold the two most important posts in the Eisenhower administration, foreign affairs and CIA operations. Alan Dallas, head of the CIA, also sits on the board of United Fruit. Two brothers, 
one runs CIA, one runs the State Department, and their family law firm is involved with United Fruit in Central America. Alan Dulles was running his own private CIA out of Wall Street, out of, out of his offices at number 44 Wall Street. You gotta understand something. It's spy business. It's about helping American business overseas. Presidents found they could earn money from corporations by using the CIA as enforcers. The CIA wrests power from Arbenz, replacing him with a military junta led by General Castillo Armas. The general's first move is to quash the land reform program, which threatens the financial interests of United Fruit and the United States. It was probably one of the worst things the CIA or the U.S. government has ever done. The United States government and the CIA are responsible for genocide in Guatemala because they put in power people uh, so as to avoid a small tax on bananas. They put in place a military dictatorship which for the next 40 years or so killed hundreds of thousands of, of people in Guatemala. Everybody likes to think that that was CIA that did a very delicate operation against our vents. Okay. Or that they did a very well-planned operation against Mossadegh. Those were two lucky things that happened. The U.S. treats the world as if it was a, the, the godfather. They, they, they're, they're very arrogant in their foreign policy.